G'day guys, Mad Matt here, and I'm with Pat Callan and Mr. 4x4. Now, we're about to check out his brand new Amarok that's on 35's extended chassis. This is probably, dare I say it, probably one of the most modified, fully legal Amaroks on the Australian road, so I'm pretty excited about it. Here at Mad Matt 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four-wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and hit the bell so you get all of the notifications. So Pat, tell me a little bit about big picture. We've got 35s, but what else is going on on this absolute monster? Well, I guess the, the first thing that we did, Matt, was actually extend the chassis by 650 millimetres. So, so that's good two, two foot, two, three foot? Pretty much, yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, um, it's quite a bit, and uh, it doesn't sound like that much, but when you actually see where that back wheel goes, <laughs> way off the back, it, it changes things a lot. And as you know, you know, when it comes to load carrying and that sort of stuff, putting the back wheel back there in a dual cab is kind of smart because I think, you know, you only need to look at any modified dual cab with a decent load on the back and it sort of throws the weight a little bit too far to the back. And, and we see those guys cracking chassis because of that, especially when they start towing. So, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So, yep. so that was the big one. That allowed us to build a an amazing canopy setup that obviously we'll go through in a second um, but I mean the nice thing is is uh, this vehicle even on 35s and with so it's got about five and a half inches of overall lift on wow. it from a standard vehicle um, it actually handles really well and drives really well and I'm not just saying that I've had cars with 35s that handle like a pig before as I'm <laughs> sure you have <laughs> but this thing it, it steers well it brakes well we've had to do a lot of engineering on it to get it done you know yeah. we're talking about uh, probably about ten thousand dollars worth of engineering because we've had to do second stage um, compliance for this this vehicle which means that it's had to be swerve tested and brake tested and wow. all that sort of stuff so so when I say it handles well well it has to because it's got to do a swerve test at 100 k's an hour it happened to be a wet day when they were doing that and, and watching the car cruise around these witches hats at 100 k's an hour yeah well, you were doing that with all, all this sort of load in there as well like um, up near gbm so yeah well we had to put 1.2 tons of in the back so this is back when it just had the tub on the back um uh and um but we had to put the load in there for that engineering mm. uh because they needed to know what it handled like not just as a as a, a lightweight truck but but with the load in the back and yeah. um uh so yeah so uh, yeah even with the load it's still cornered really well so. wow so let's start going through some of the modifications that you've done on the this vehicle um which is extensive so grab yourself a beer and uh and and get sit down because this is probably going to be a fairly long video now the first thing i want to touch on references a video which i did uh, probably a year or so back now and it was about the amarok recovery points in, I've linked it above here, so go and watch that because, well, in, as you'll see in that video, I wasn't too impressed with the design there. But you've gone and got the other form of Amarok recovery point. So let's come down, tell me the story with these. Yeah, so Matt, these are from a company called Net 4x4 in Melbourne. Um, Net 4x4 are, you know, Amarok experts. A fellow called Mark Dernbauer um, actually designed these recovery points, and that's sort of the core of his business is these. He doesn't stuff around. <laughs> these are rated at six tonne each. What are they being tested to? And uh, they have been tested to over 20 tonne. Um, uh, Singular. So Singular. So, and, and the way that he's done it is not just testing the recovery point itself. He's actually got cut an Amarok chassis off and actually put that in a test bed right. and broken it. And um, and it's actually not the recovery point that breaks. It's more the chassis that, <laughs> that tends to break. So. <laughs> We're not going to put anywhere near 20 tonne in a recovery. No. It's no. just not really possible unless we're using one of those military trucks over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. But now, you were telling me something interesting, and I kind of like this idea about his fuse design in the recovery point. Absolutely. So he's got a number of mounting points in here. He's got about, I think, oh, three or four different points, but one of those um, bolts in there is actually designed to shear first. So it gives you that early warning system. Yeah. So it says, hey, you've got a problem here. You're about to go, um, but I'm not going to let this whole thing turn into a lethal projectile because mm. I'll still, you know, so you get that warning of that that sheared bolt, um, which, you know, is just an awesome feature. As, as yeah. you know, you're, you know, right into safe recoveries yeah. and, and having those sort of fusible links there is, 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 is just cool. Getting that warning that something's going wrong is so important 
And that's where, you know, I keep banging on about snatch recoveries. Because of that uncontrolled energy release, you, you don't get a warning if mm -hmm. something's gone wrong. At least you get some sort of warning with that. I like it. I've, I've had a good look at these, and if I had an Amarok and I had to choose between the previous video I referenced and these, these would be the, the points I would go for. In my opinion, and I've done a lot of boiler making and welding work, I'm not, you know, not an engineer, but in my opinion, that would be where I would be heading out of those two options. Now, um, you've got a winch in there. What's, what's the winch? What's the capacity? Yeah, so it's a Bush Ranger um, Revo winch, and um, it's, a, it's a cracking winch. Geez, you've got me on the actual capacity. I think she's a 10,000 pounder. <laughs> what's the motor and what specs have you, what have you done to that? So, um, look, this vehicle's all about long range touring and and reliability you know um, obviously we go to pretty remote places you know mm. this will go up the canning stock route and all that sort of stuff and and so the Amarok to me has bucket loads of power I'm really happy with it um, you know this is this is the um, uh, 580 Amarok which is 580 Newton meters um, and what I've done is I've put the Steinbauer under the bonnet that gives me an extra 20% power and torque so it does give you a bit extra because we are carrying extra load the reason why I chose that um, was because if anything goes wrong engine wise I can unplug that unit in the right. bush and I can get back to standard and then I can start troubleshooting and, and I just kind of that that was sort of the reason why I settled on the Steinbauer because I do like the ability in a remote location to be able to try and diagnose any yeah. issues if they do go wrong. I mean, we've been running the V6 for for the last uh, three years and it's been going great guns, so yeah. I haven't had any issues. But, um, and hey, I've got other Amaroks in the driveway that have been flash tuned and have got awesome power delivery and everything. So, yeah. um, and we haven't had any issues with those, but with this vehicle, she's gonna go really remote. So that's why I chose the yeah. the, uh, the Steinbauer for that one. I'm waiting for the, the invite to go on one of those remote trips. <laughs> yeah. uh, just move down this way, Pat. <laughs> You've got to throw these things in there. Now, as you're probably well aware, Amarok's don't have a low range. They've got a very low first and they're automatic uh, for the most part. Um, but differentials and gearing and that sort of thing, running 35s, I'm assuming you've done get diff gears and ratio changes. Not a thing, mate, not a thing. And, and you're exactly right. You would normally, certainly if you're driving a patrol or a cruiser or something, you would just assume that that is the, one of the first things to look at. Mm. Um, we didn't do that. Um, and it hasn't hurt it at all. And I'm not wow. just saying that. I think, um, I think the combination of the eight speed auto, having those really low firsts and stuff and um, couple that with a little bit of extra power from the Steinbauer, yeah. it just turns the tires really, really well. And um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't affect it, not even in hill descent control and all that sort of really? stuff. Really, so you've had it, like, we know it's not a rock crawler as such, but you've undoubtedly had it in some more gnarly sort of terrain you're not finding you dialing the numbers and waiting for the turbos to come on before it starts to, to operate? Not at all, not at all, mate, yeah, no. So she's crawling really, really well. Um, we've had it on some steep rocks out the back of Esperance yeah. that are you know, pretty decent grade. Yeah. And coming down, it crawls really nice and slow. It's um, surprising, mate. You, you're exactly right. You would think that that yeah. would be an, an issue, but it's, um, it's, it's not, so. I didn't ask the question earlier, what's the GVM or what's the tear weight as it sits now and what's the GVM? So she's sitting at about 3.2 tonne as, yeah. as it stands yeah. at the moment and we've added um, another 600 kilos to the, um, that's, to the that's, GVM. That's so, substantial. So yeah. How are you stopping it? Are the standard brakes working or have you upgraded all that? Look, they've got four wheel discs all round, but we have gone uh, for rugged brakes. Um, uh, Aussie product out of Queensland and they are upgraded in sort of every way. So I think we're looking at um, uh, triple pot, um, got to get my brake specs right because I'm not a mechanic. <laughs> but, so but, um, six pots. Yeah, six, three on yes, each side. That's it. Six, six pot. pots on, on, on the, so three pots per pad. That's it. That's it. And they yeah, are, okay. and they just pull it up brilliantly. They're, yeah, they're right. uh, only on the fronts, not on the back, but it's still got discs on the, on the back as well. Mm. Um, the nice thing about the rugged brakes too, is that they are fully sort of rebuildable on the side of the track. So you can get out there what with, see you do with a set of tools. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'm happy to. <laughs> Hopefully, but if you do get anything stuck in them or or anything, you know, any rocks yeah, or anything, yeah, you can yeah. pull things apart and, and, yeah. and have a go. But a lot, yeah. I mean, bigger capacity, bigger, um, uh, you know, kind of bigger everything, I guess, yeah. in terms of performance. And these guys have got a race heritage, so they, they, they know how to build something that is rebuildable, that needs to be done in the pits and that sort yeah. of stuff. So they took that, as well as plenty of four-wheel drive knowledge, and yeah. put that into the product. So it's, they're, awesome. it pulls up great, which is all okay. I care about, so yeah. Yeah, well, that's it, and, and that's, uh, that's pretty impressive stuff. Um, 
So if you, I didn't mention earlier, but we're actually at the Perth four-wheel drive show at the moment, and this is the first time this vehicle's been displayed publicly. At the Sydney show, you did reference and tell us it was coming, and I was kind of like, oh, this will be good to see. So <laughs> I'm actually pretty cool to see this. Now, um, it's about 40 degrees today, Pat, so um, let's get, uh, get no, moving on. Be, before we do, mate, I've just yeah. got, to, uh, got to show you one of my toys. So, oh, right. so uh, we've got oh. a bit of a lift, so <laughs> we need our little side steps uh, get, to... You're getting uh, old to, uh, <laughs> I am, mate, I am. <laughs> That's I am. cool. Again, we're thinking touring spec, but what's going to happen with those if you hit, you know, we're on a ramp over angle? Because no, a longer wheelbase, your ramp over is quite reduced. No, 100%. And, and that was a big consideration with these. Um, the, um, I guess it's a it's an interesting thing. So they're absolutely not rock sliders. Um, and if you do get, you know, um, if you do take the full weight of the vehicle up onto them, no doubt you'd, you'd have some damage. The nice thing about them though is that they actually mount significantly higher and fold up to be significantly higher than your standard side steps. Mm. Um, so as you know, your chassis based ones have the big bit of tube coming out and, um, and so you're losing that clearance. Um, the nice thing about this one is it's not mounted to the chassis, they're actually bolted to the body. Um, right. So they just sort of, yeah, come out and up. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, look, we've we've uh, done some uh, uh, yeah done some things that have challenged the, the ramp over on the on the on the car so far, and yeah. they've uh, and they've been absolutely fine. So we've we've okay. taken a few knocks on the. I, I guess when you think about it, as long as you're buying the product to suit your needs and understand your needs, fitting something like that, worst case scenario, you month that you're not money the silly vehicle. So yeah. you, you, okay, you might be up for whatever those costs yeah. to replace the side, but. I'd probably rather that than completely destroying my sill. Well, and they're just plain old handy. You're, when you've got 35s in an Amarok, it's actually a pain to get in unless you've got them. And they yeah, come right. down to a lower height than, than a standard side yeah, okay. So it's kind of, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled with them in, yeah, right. in practice. So okay. yeah, yeah. There you go. All but right. you look you look thirsty, mate. It's a hot day mm, in Perth. Um, flies are good. <laughs> can, I, um, can I perhaps um, get you an ale or something? Or? Oh, mate. I've, I've, I've seen your videos about this when you did the prototypes. So, yes. beer o'clock. So it's always important to have a beer on tap yeah, uh, right. when you're off-road. We'll even uh, we'll even get you a nice uh, a nice chilled glass, mate. So uh, didn't I come to the right place today? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, now what beer am I drinking? Well, mate, this is actually Carlton beer, and look at that first pour of the Fantastic. morning. Fantastic. And is it cold? Well, you tell oh. me, mate. You tell me. I'd hate to leave you alone by that. Oh. So, Cheers. <laughs> Making videos is hard work. <laughs> We're going to stay around here for a while. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your beer at home. <laughs> now I noticed some. Um, I noticed before when I stuck my head underneath that you've got dual tanks, fuel tanks. That is. Yep. Um, so. How's that work? Are they two separate tanks, or and what's the capacity? Yeah, so we've got um, 185 litres of fuel under there, so they're custom tanks to suit the longer chassis. So we had a had a good think about where we wanted the weight on the vehicle, and uh, I sort of wanted it centralised and low, as most of us do, to keep the centre of gravity down and everything. Yeah, so we've actually got two tanks under there that feed into each other, and we've just okay. got the single filler so um, that's, up that's here. This so one here. That's a diesel up there, and underneath there, that's the Ad Blue. Oh, okay. Um, Yep. under there. So you've got 180 litres in two tanks that are basically essentially one tank, no transfer pumps or anything like that. Yep. What sort of fuel economy are you getting? So we're getting um, about 13 litres per 100 out of it. Um, so not real good on the math, but that's what, 1500? Yeah, about 1500 k's, k's I worked it out as, so yeah. So if you were to do one of a real remote desert sort of trip where you're unsupported, you're, wow. Yeah, so it's, could yeah. You, you could, couldn't quite do the canning. No, canning's um, 1800 or something. Yeah, 18, 1900 really to be safe. Although you, you know, you can get fuel at the halfway mark, so mm. um, so it'd be yeah certainly easy to do. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I suppose if I really wanted to, I could probably throw a few jerrys yeah. on the roof if I if I wanted to yeah. do something longer. But yeah, as, as it is, it's um, it's pretty good. Obviously, in some of those situations, you might use a bit more because of deep sand and everything. Yes. Um, um, but uh, yeah, look, I was thrilled. I think it's partly because we haven't gone too high in the roof. You know, the, if um, the, yeah, that when the when the tent is folded down, um, she she actually sits fairly fairly flat up Aerodynamic, there. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So moving forward, after we've had our beer, we then get a coffee. <laughs> Well, I think I'll just show you that. Yeah, I don't in, want the coffee, in terms I don't. of the beer, we will. We'll just reveal. Uh, it's pretty cool. So we have a, it's a proper keg. <laughs> it's a proper keg. So uh, 
Now, I think this is worth worth mentioning. This, I mean, so we've got a 50 litre keg here. Um, we've got the full 2.6 litre gas. It's all on a slide um, built by Camp King, who did the canopy. Yeah. And um, people have had a lot of questions about that over the weekend so far. Oh, and, and the, like, what day do you go to AA? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about that. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, people have quite rightly said, well, where do you get the kegs from? You literally rock down to your local pub and you say, what do you got? And um, you've got to make sure that the fitting's right. So that's got right. a CUB fitting on it, which is a D-type coupler. Okay. And, um, all pubs around Australia will have a CUB um, type of beer in, in stock pretty much and most of them carry things, um, you know, they carry a couple of common beers like yep. your VBs and that sort of stuff sure. in stock all the time. So the theory is that I'm running low out the back of Birdsville, I can rock into the Birdsville Hotel, swap my keg over and uh, chuck in a new one and <laughs> then, I'm, then I'm okay to cross the desert. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's fantastic. Now, so we've got that, then we've got these drawers setting up here. So how does this all work? Yes, um, so I'll show you our um, pantry. This is um, Camp King's design. So I just threw them my accessories and said, can you please make them fit and make it look pretty? And, uh, and this they came up with, which is, I think, pretty nifty because we've got a pretty slim space here. But um, this just folds out like so. And here is my pantry. Okay. And that folds up there. So, yeah. so yeah, everything is accessible. Yeah, slides right. out, all that sort of gear. You've got if, your cutler if, in here. Yeah, okay. If somebody was wanting something like this for their own vehicle, are they going to be able to get this from Camp, Camp King, is it? Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. Yeah, Camp King okay, up, so up in Brisbane. They built all of this. I mean, obviously, I supplied right. the coffee machine, the fridge, the keg, sure. all that sort of stuff. But... Yeah. Um, but this is all all their design, and um, and we've got other fantastic features up there, like the, the, the twelve volt oven, yeah, the pie and, warmer, Very and the good. little stereo and everything. And okay. um, our cooking oh. is uh, over here. Go. So we've got our our ceramic cooktop, and yeah, and um, we What's, can. That's what two forty volt. Yeah, so two forty volt. Oh, so um, plug up there, and and we've got a plug um, up so here. What's, so what's Oh, we'll probably get to the electrics which are on the other side. Mm. There's obviously plenty of it. Yes, yes. <laughs> so we'll get yeah. around there. Uh, what's in this locker down under here, Pat? Uh, so we've got the um, ARB twin compressor in there, as well as a bit of other storage yep. gear in there. Are these are these proving to be dust dust resistant. Oh, they are, mate. I mean, you can sort of um, see um, around the edges. There's um, plenty of dust, but in the actual inside. Um, it's been great, and we drove through quite a bit of bull dust um, okay. on the on the way across to Perth. Yeah, okay. um, so yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, so we move around the back. Yep. Um, I'll bring the camera around, Bill. So you sleep here last night? Um, yeah, let's say what I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got two uh, spares on the rear. Mm -hmm. You got two exhausts. Yes. You got two recovery points. You got a locker in the back. Okay. What's yeah, going a little on locker there? there. So that's um, that's pretty handy. Um, oh, she's locked up at the okay. moment. Okay. Um, but recovery that's um, recovery gear. All the recovery gears in there. Okay. And what's the story with the rooftop tent? Uh, so the rooftop tent is um, is pretty nifty. So I'll um, what we've uh, what we've done up here is we've got a bit of bit of luxury. So it's obviously got our double bed um, up here, but. What we've um, Come done around here with the camera and up, up the top is um, it's nice having that little bit of an awning out front to uh, you know when you're getting out and if it's a bit drizzly you've kind of got some shelter. Yeah, absolutely, and um, and we've got a bit of a, uh, a screen up the top oh, here if you can oh. see that. So uh, oh, is that to watch the Mad Matt Fall Drive videos? <laughs> absolutely. So you can yeah. learn how to do recoveries and fall drive. Exactly. I subscribed yeah. to Mad Matt, and that's the only reason I put the screen up there. It was uh, that was it. it was <laughs> he doesn't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So you got a t that's that's fair dink of a TV. No, well that's just, uh, what is it, it's just a, basically a projector screen and we just oh, did a okay. print of a TV on there. Oh, okay. And, um, but we've got a little, a, a yeah, little mini little, projector yeah, yeah, yeah. to project up there. So you can watch your Netflix, your Mad Mad okay. and, <laughs> and, uh, and everything up, up okay. there overnight. So yeah. you just project onto the screen. But, okay. but there's another little secret up there that oh, you yeah. might find that is uh, sort of around here. So 
We like to go camping in cold climates around Australia and uh, we like to go camping in the snow and we like, uh, and even as, as you'd know Mad Mad, the, um, out in the red centre, it can get bloody freezing yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you're out there. So um, we've got ourselves a little, uh, uh, a little diesel heater and um, I've used it twice and it is unbelievable. So this one's a Webasto one. You can buy cheap Chinese ones, but I, I didn't really fancy having one of those um, under my bed that might sort of spark up and self combust <laughs> while I'm in, in bed. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> wrong sort of heating. Yeah. But, but the thing about this is, I mean, that's a diesel tank there. Um, I've used in that gauge 10 mil worth of uh, diesel um, in, um, uh, in two nights, um, two full nights. So, 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 so that's a month worth of cold nights. It is, yeah. Like I, I calculated it, and it'll run on that little tank um, for over a hundred hours. Um, so, do you find once it's warm, you turn it off at night? It's got a thermostat on it, so you can temperature adjust it. So I found yeah. that if I turn it up to twenty four, it was like an oven in there, right. but. But um, I dial it down to like um, about 18 degrees or something, yeah. and, and that's fine. Yeah. And it does use a little bit of 12 volt um, to uh, to power the fan um, through there. But um, I went to bed with the batteries on 97% and woke up with them on 96%. 1% of battery overnight. Wow. It's like and and if you don't have the storage for the diesel tank, um, you can plumb them into your regular diesel tank, yeah. and, uh, which in, I probably would have done in future. You know, if I had mm. of. Um, but I also when when I when I set it up, I sort of thought that. Um, I was worried about not knowing about how much diesel it was using, so I kind of wanted to visually yeah. see it and, and go, okay. I'm not, you know, I'm not in yeah. the middle of a desert and, and I've just um, used all my diesel overnight. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, so, yeah. yeah so, okay. uh, and so we've got another cabinet here. What are we keeping in Yeah, so that's just spares and tools and that sort of stuff. And okay, I've, I've, I've got to get the keys, mate. Yeah, yep. she's locked up. Okay, and then, uh, so here's the, the nuclear power plant. Jeez, that's so 3,000 watt. Is that another? Yeah, so that's the, that's the battery management system okay. there. So yeah. Um, yeah, that sort of decides whether you're getting, you know, whether your best power is from solar or the alternator or or 240, and and uh, and it can charge from both at once. So it'll charge your solar while you're driving as well as from your alternator. And um, this is kind of, I, you know, I, I'm just so thrilled. Um, totally 12 volt did the up in Brisbane did the installation on it, um, all Red Arc gear, and it is. Um, uh, just an absolute joy to have this and this right. the, because we've gone massive overkill on the inverter 3000 watts there um, that means that we can run just about whatever we like so well, th yeah. this I mean this, you can run an electric kettle or anything well we could run a we, you could literally run a household dryer on it, <laughs> on it so, but it means I mean I'll show you over here you know here's the $29 um, Kmart um, sandwich, sandwich press yep. um, we all know what it's like on um, you know day five of a desert trip when uh, when you, your bread starts getting a bit yep. dry and stale well, and, you and you're getting jack of the wraps and, you, and you've got a cheese toasty banging out on one of those things <laughs> it is freaking awesome <laughs> so, yeah, wow. so uh, I'm gonna put on another yeah. 50 kilos driving this but, uh, but yeah. no it's Beer and cheese singers in the desert with Pat. That, that could be a, that'd be a show there. It could be, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, and you've got some nice lighting up above us here. Have they got the bug lights in them as well? It does, yeah. So yeah. you can turn off the, or you can run both um, orange and, yeah. um, or just um, orange alone. That's worth so. having. That yeah, really does yeah. make a difference yeah, to the yeah. mozzies and bugs that want to come and gather around your lights. Yeah. That's it. Okay, and then another storage locker here. Yep, that's just for cords and things in there. Okay. Um, and yep. uh, yeah, but plenty of, plenty of room. Okay, water tank. Water tank. So we've got a 75 litre water tank under the belly of the vehicle um, wow. as well. So, yeah, okay. um, uh, so plenty of yeah, plenty of water storage there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Um, we've got the Rhino rack on top. Uh, we've got a uh, Red Arc solar panel on the roof. What what wattage um, is that? Uh, it's only an 80 water. Yeah. Um, and. Uh, uh, yeah, so I just um, I didn't want it to take over the vehicle. I've got room on the um, Camp King canopy there to put um, another panel or two up there, yeah. and I may do, but I sort of want to keep the wind resistance down as well. So I, I might do that later on. Um, well, it's going to depend on. Are you, do you tend to when you're filming? Does the camera crew tend to charge off your vehicle, or they got their own camera? They've got car? their own. So they've so. yeah. I mean, oh, we forgot to mention actually. The reason why we've uh, you know we've got the inverter there, but we forgot to mention the batteries. I've got four lithium batteries there from uh, Revolution, and okay. they're 460 amps. They're designed for.
powerful, really quick discharge and recharge. So you can get, there's about three or four different classes of mm. um, lithium batteries and um, and those ones are right at the pointy end. So that means you can just, you know, rip, pa- rip power out of them right. with a 3000 watt inverter right. that just goes, yep, I'll, I'll power your coffee machine. I'll yeah. uh, I'll, I'll run you, your sandwich press. I'll run your coffee machine, which is 2000 or yeah. about 1800 watts. Um, and uh, and it'll do it no problem at all. Wow. And then you can yeah throw the power back into them pretty pretty fast as yeah, well. Right. So um, yeah okay. Well, are there anything else that you think people would want to know that we haven't covered off? I mean, this has been pretty extensive, I think. It has, mate. It has. Um, look, um, we uh, we will be going into a bit more detail on uh, Mr4x4.com.au yeah, so in, in terms of. We'll the... link that down below in the video. We'll link to this content and. The, yeah, yeah. Awesome, yeah, yeah. Um, where else are people going to be able to find out thinking of a global audience? Yeah, no, Unsealed 4x4 magazine. Okay. Um, I'll link that below as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so free online magazine for people to, to scroll through. And yeah. Because there's a lot of detail in this build, um, it's great to run around it as quickly as we have, but there's a lot of detail that's actually kind of cool that I've discovered and learned since I've been building it. So um, little tips along the way, like um, you know, securing coffee machines and all that sort of important stuff, and yeah, setting up yeah. beer kegs yeah, and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah cheers. Yeah, cheers, mate. You're beating me. Yeah, <laughs> you're doing all the talking. Um, so the only problem we've got now, Pat, it's great to look at this, and you know, in reality, when the Amarox first hit the market. I've got to be honest, I kind of thought, you know, they're, they're just going to be for the soft rotor. I think you're probably starting to prove us wrong. But the only way we're going to take this and do the next level is I think we need to go on a trip together and I need to have a wheel. <laughs> and then I can come and tell the people what I really think. And see if you Should I trust me. him? I don't know. Is it? Someone, man, with, man, someone with that name and, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that head, I don't know. <laughs> Good points too. I'll just keep twisting his arm and working the angles and see what we can do. Maybe there's a video coming up. Actually, I, sorry to interrupt there, mate. Yeah. I, I, we are actually doing a, a documentary on Channel 10, um, okay. which was actually the point, and I think I forgot to mention that at the start. So, so uh, Network 10 in Australia for our Aussie audience, um, early February 2020. Um, we're doing a documentary called Building the Ultimate 4x4. We're talking about touring 4x4 here, not rock crawler and that sort of stuff. And we're going to be taking people through the entire process from um, when we first chopped the chassis through to um, engineering. We filmed the whole process because yeah, I've learned a lot along the way yeah. too just to go, oh right, so that's what you need to do. And then we right. send the paperwork off to Canberra and all this sort of stuff. So. Um, and some cool stories and a lot of stories that we're going to be telling of the companies that helped us along the way because um, I think what people don't necessarily appreciate in Australia is that we are the world home of 4x4 touring. We build the best products and we manufacture and design the best products yeah. in the world for right. our sort of touring. For that, you know, if you want products that are reliable and trustworthy and um, that's the sort of story that, that we're trying to tell. It's not about some bloke in his fancy Amarok. Um, yeah. uh, it's about um, it's about telling the story of these awesome companies yeah. like Net 4x4 who build yeah. those amazing recovery points yeah, and stuff yeah. and, and I think often in Australia we, we're good at looking you know to other companies uh, countries and saying oh they're amazing look what they've got when it comes to four-wheel drive touring as, as you'd know it's yeah. um, we do it pretty good <laughs> we, we do all right I mean as we're filming this Seamers on in, in Las Vegas and I've got to get to that but um, but you know the number of Aussie companies like MSA they are over there with their brand new towing mirrors and uh, and companies like that are getting Australian innovations out there on the international market I think it's fantastic mm. um, I, I absolutely love it because um, it's just the creativity and we get here and we prove it we take it out you know you're going to beat on this thing for the next however many years mm. and and you're going to come back if we did this in a couple of years time and you're going to say well I got this wrong and, and that didn't work but I've improved it and there's the innovation you talk to Camp King next thing they're doing something better because you found something that didn't work I guess absolutely yeah. so yeah. pretty exciting stuff I'm, I, I'm you know hats off to you no oh, thanks oh, mate. You yeah. can't take that off. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys look I hope you've appreciated that I've really appreciated your time Pat thanks the mate. Cheers, mate. delightful excellent and uh, I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell so you get all the notifications on the Mad Map 4 Drive YouTube channel Everything about this build, we'll link as much of it down below. Hopefully Pat and his team can send us other links as things updated and we can just add them to the video so over time you'll get you know, a bit more resource of what, what's been here. All right, thanks so much guys. I'm Mad Matt. Stay safe on the trails.